Now let's look at microwave filters. And uh, the thing that makes a microwave filter different from a normal filter that you may have learned about in earlier courses in electrical engineering is that a microwave filter is designed to be immersed in a match system. It is designed to be connected to other quote unquote match devices. Devices whose port impedances are equal to characteristic impedance Z0 of the transmission line connecting them, generally 50 ohms. <coughs> so we analyze our circuit our filter in a match system. At the output of a filter, we have a match load, which would be, generally speaking, the input impedance of some other set of match devices in a match system. Our source at the input is a match source, which again is an equivalent circuit to some other set of match devices connected together uh, that are supplying some energy. And so the question is, how does this device, this microwave filter, behave in a match system? It's designed to work in a match system. It's specified for a match system. And if we connect our filter to anything else other than a quote unquote match source and a match load, then we will get different behavior than what our specs um, uh, call for. So a microwave filter is a linear passive and lossless, at least ideally lossless, and reciprocal two-port device. We have uh, power available from a source and we have power absorbed by the load. The most uh, fundamental parameter in a microwave filter is the power transmission coefficient T. And the power transmission coefficient is defined as the ratio of the power absorbed by the match load at the output to the power available to the from the match source rather at the uh, input. Now notice this is identical to the uh, uh, definition that we have for power gain uh, for let's say an amplifier and they are the same thing. Generally speaking if we're talking about an amplifier where this ratio would be greater than one we call it gain and the gain is going to be then greater than one. For a passive device uh, where this ratio will be less than or equal to one we call the same ratio instead of gain we call it transmission because this value almost certainly will be a value that is less than one. <clears throat> if it is passive. More than almost certainly, it definitely will be less than or equal to one. What we find then is for a microwave filter, this transmission, this power transmission coefficient must be some value between zero and one. Zero occurs when there's no power absorbed by the match load at the output. One is the case where the power absorbed by that match load is equal to the available power of the source. And of course, the power absorbed by that uh, load cannot be uh, greater than the power available to the source if we have a passive device like a filter. So again, this relationship, the transmission power transmission T is between zero and one, really comes from the idea that the absorbed power of the load must be less than or equal to the available power at the source. So you may think, <clears throat> gosh, you know, if we have a matched and lossless device, um, we talked about a matchless device will always have a situation where the power absorbed by the load is equal to the power available from the source. This is the case if we have a two-port device that is both, both matched and lossless. And in that case, the transmission would be equal to one. On the previous slide, though, I said for a filter, the power absorbed by the load may be less than the power available from the source, and that would imply the transmission, of course, can be less than one. So <clears throat> which one is correct? Well, if you go back and look at uh, the previous slide, when I talked about filter, although I said it was lossless and reciprocal and linear, um, I never said that the filter is a matched, quote unquote, matched device. In other words, we find a situation where the port impedance, specifically the input impedance of our filter, may not be equal numerically to Z0. We may have a situation where there is essentially a reflected wave generated at the input to our filter. What we find for a microwave filter is that sometimes it is a match device and sometimes it's not. Sometimes the input impedance is numerically equal to Z0 or at least close to it and other times it's very far from Z0. And when we say sometimes it is and sometimes it's not, it's not that we're applying that the device is time invariant, that it switches mode as a function of time. What we're speaking here is the match or unmatch is dependent on the signal frequency. We will find for some 
signal frequency, some frequencies, the um, input impedance is numerically to Z0, we have very much a matched device. But for others, we'll find that it is not matched at all. So for other frequencies, we find that the uh, filter will be horribly mismatched, that uh, uh, almost all of the power at the input of the filter will be reflected and therefore hardly any at all of the power will be absorbed by the load at the other end. And so we can say that the transmission function, the power transmission coefficient now, is a function of frequency. For some frequencies, we'll want this value to be an ideal value of 1. For other frequencies, we want this value ideally to be a value of 0. So for each frequency, it's either uh, passes through the filter and be absorbed with the load, or it is completely rejected by the filter, reflected, and therefore no, none of its energy will be absorbed by the load. So frequencies where that are not rejected, that pass through and are absorbed by the match load to the other end, frequencies for which the transmission coefficient is equal to 1, we say those frequencies lie in the passband of the filter. Conversely, frequencies that lie outside the passband in the stop band ideally have a transmission of zero. They are reflected completely at the input, and none of their power is then absorbed by the um, none of the power is absorbed by the match load at the other end of the filter. In a perfect filter, a frequency signal frequency is either in the passband with the transmission of one, or it is in the stop band with the transmission of zero. The Frequencies that define the passband and the stop band are one of the fundamental uh, parameters of the filter behavior. So how do we go about um, creating this uh, frequency uh, dependent device? Well, in some ways it's hard not to make a device that is frequency independent. Remember, if we have a lossless device, then it must be made up completely of reactive elements. And the impedance of every reactive element is dependent on omega, dependent on the frequency. And so we find the behavior of every lossless device to be very frequency dependent. And our filters are designed in a way to utilize that frequency dependence, frequency dependence to either uh, allow signals of certain frequencies to pass to the match load to be absorbed, or frequencies of other sig uh, signals of other frequencies to be rejected and therefore not absorbed by the load. We can think of this in terms of the input impedance. We have a microwave filter that's terminated in a match load. Now we have a one port device. What is the input impedance of this one port device? If this filter were perfectly matched at all frequencies, this input impedance would also be numerically equal to Z0. But we design our filter in a way so that for some frequencies, the input impedance is equal to Z0, but for other frequencies, it is most definitely not. So for frequencies in the passband, we design our filter such that when it's terminated in a match load, that the input impedance is numerically equal to Z0 for those frequencies in the passband. When I say numerically equal to Z0, they're close, that the return loss is, uh, is a good return loss, um, uh, ideally, let's say, uh, 20, 30, 40 dB. <clears throat> Again, ideally, they're perfectly matched, the frequencies that are in the passband. Conversely, then, frequencies, uh, signals whose frequencies are outside the passband and the stop band, uh, we want to design our filter in a way that the input impedance for those frequencies um, are purely reactive. If this input impedance is purely reactive, it can absorb no energy from the source. And since the input impedance cannot absorb any energy from the source, neither then can the match load that's connected to the other end. For the stop band, we want the input impedance to be purely reactive, and therefore the transmission will be equal to zero. Again, in the pass band, we want the input impedance to be purely real and a value of Z0, such that the transmission would be equal to one. So you probably noticed I keep saying ideally. In a perfect filter, we'd have a transmission of either zero or one, which defines uniquely a frequency as being in the stop band or being in the pass band. But of course, the transmission function T is a function of omega, uh, must be a continuous 
function. It can't be one that is discontinuous with frequency. We cannot have a frequency where instantaneously the transmission will change from a value of 1 to a value of 0. Instead, there's a gradual transition from 1 to 0, which means there are many frequencies that are neither exactly a transmission equal to 1 nor exactly equal to 0. And this transition will de uh, define, uh, uh, in many ways, in large ways, the uh, behavior of our filter. We call it the roll-off or the stop-band uh, uh, roll-off. And so <clears throat> what we find in the pass-band uh, the input impedance is not exactly equal to zero, but will be somewhat close to zero, which means the reflection coefficient, uh, input reflection coefficient, and this is simply the load reflection coefficient defined in terms of Zn. So in other words, Zn minus Z0 divided by Zn plus Z0 is gamma n. We'll find in the passband that this will be somewhat approximately equal to zero. And I probably should say the magnitude of this is going to be a value that is small, very close to zero. So in the stop band, we have a situation where the input impedance, uh, it may not be uh, purely reactive, but it's mostly reactive. The real part would be small compared to a large uh, reactive part there. And in that case, we have a situation where the input reflection coefficient has a magnitude which is approximately equal to 1. Maybe not exactly, but very close to 1 when we are in the stop band. So again, we're starting to put approximations in here in terms of defining stop band and pass band. And that is because uh, we cannot build a filter with the ideal case where the transmission is exactly exactly one or exactly zero. So now let's look at this slightly different. Let's put a length of transmission line between our match source and our filter, and a length of transmission line between our filter and our match load. And of course we see that these are equivalent circuits. The input impedance of a length of transmission line terminated in a quote-unquote match load numerically equal to C0 is going to be an input impedance numerically equal to C0 as well. Likewise, this length of transmission line transforms our quote-unquote match source, source with an impedance of Z0, into a new source which likewise has an impedance, output impedance, equal to Z0. So these are the equivalent circuits from what we had before. By inserting the links of transmission line, we have not altered the fact that on the input of the filter we have a quote-unquote match source, and likewise on the output of the filter we have a, a impedance, a load impedance, which is numerically equal to Z0 as well. What the length of transmission lines allow us to do is to talk about then the incident and reflected wave on this transmission line. If we look at the first transmission line, we have some power incident along the transmission line. Since this is a quote-unquote match source, a source whose impedance is Z0, we know this incident power is equal to the available power of this source. But we have a reflected power here. The input impedance of this entire structure now, that input impedance may not be equal to Z0 exactly, and so we find there'll be some reflected power. How much reflected power? It depends on the magnitude squared of gamma n. Again, if the input impedance were equal to Z0 exactly, the magnitude of gamma n would be 0 and there'd be no reflected power. But on the other hand, if we were in the stop band, the magnitude squared of gamma n would be something close to 1, and therefore almost all of the incident power would be reflected by the input. And that is how a filter, essentially, we could think of it working. If we're in the pass band, all of the incident power, all of the available power is <coughs> absorbed by the input impedance of the filter that's terminated in a match load. If we're in the stop band, then all of that incident power is reflected, and therefore none gets to the other side. And we can see that here by looking at the incident reflected wave on our second transmission line. Since we terminate that transmission line in a load numerically equal to Z0, we know there is no reflected power. There is only incident power flowing toward this load at the end. How much incident, how much incident power is there? Well, it is the incident power on the other side, the available power of this source, times our transmission coefficient T. Remember, T is the ratio of the... <clears throat> absorb power to the available power there. So if we look at this from a conservation of energy standpoint, we can think of it this way. We have incident power that comes down, some of it's reflected, and the part that's not reflected then becomes the 
uh, incident power on the load on the other side. Wave comes down here, some of it's scattered back, reflected back, the remainder passes through the filter. Remember, there's no loss. This is a lossless device, passes through the filter and then on to the load. From a conservation of energy standpoint, we say this, that the incident power on this transmission line, remember that's the available power of this match source, is equal then to the reflected power plus the power absorbed by the load, all right, which will be equal to this. What isn't reflected is absorbed. Now we take this equation and we can divide through by the incident power. Remember that's the available power of the source there. And when we do that, we get this result. Of course, <clears throat> this first term, the ratio of the reflected power at the input, which is that right there, to the incident power on the input, that ratio is by definition the magnitude squared of gamma in, the input reflection coefficient. Likewise, the second term here is the ratio of the power absorbed by the load to the power that is incident on the input, which again remembers the available power, and that by definition is equal to the power transmission function. <clears throat> Finally, if we take the incident power and divide by the incident power, we get 1. So we can say 1 is equal to the magnitude squared of gamma n plus the power transmission coefficient. And really this again is a conservation of energy statement. Um, if we have a situation where the reflection coefficient is uh, magnitude squared is equal to 0.4, then the transmission, the power transmission, must be equal to 0.6. In other words, if we're saying 40% of this incident power is reflected, then 60% of that incident power is absorbed. If this value is equal to 1, then the transmission must be zero. If all of the incident power is reflected, none of it will be passed through the filter and none of it will be absorbed. That's the case, the ideal case for stop band. Conversely, if we have a situation where none of the power is reflected, the magnitude squared of gamma n is equal to zero, nothing's reflected, that means all of the incident power is absorbed. The transmission coefficient is equal to one. That is the ideal case for the pass band. Again, this really just says that uh, the uh, percentage of the power reflected plus the percentage of the power that is absorbed by the load must be equal to 100% of the power that is available from the source. So now we can define four kinds of microwave filters, and these are terms you've probably seen before, low pass, high pass, band pass, and stop band. But with respect to microwave filters, we um, define these not in terms of the power absorbed by the filter, since the filter is a lossless device. Instead, we define them in terms of these two fundamental functions, the power transmission uh, coefficient t, uh, or equivalently, the magnitude squared of the uh, input reflection coefficient. And remember, the uh, value of this plus the value of this must always equal to 1 by conservation of energy. <clears throat> the incident power, the available power of the source is either reflected or it, it, it goes through the filter and is absorbed by the load. A low pass filter then has a pass band which extends from a frequency of zero all the way up to a frequency omega c. In that pass band, the transmission um, is a value that uh, for the most uh, uh, most of it is a value approximately equal to 1. And the reason the transmission is equal to 1 in the pass band, of course, must be because the reflection, the magnitude square of the reflection, is approximately equal to 0. None of the incident power is reflected at the input, and therefore all of it passes through the filter and is absorbed by the load. That's what happens in the pass band. In the stop band, then, the opposite occurs. Any frequency greater than the cutoff frequency, the transmission drops to zero. No power is absorbed by the match load attached to the output, and that is because all of the incident power is reflected at the input to the filter. And, of course, this is because the input impedance at uh, those frequencies are... Um, uh, almost completely imaginary, reactive, and therefore cannot absorb any energy.
question is, what is this cutoff frequency, omega c? And it's defined um, uh, fairly unambiguously in this case as the value of the transmission is equal to 0.5. And of course, since the transmission and the magnitude square of the reflection coefficient at the input must be equal to 1, if the transmission is equal to 0.5 at the cutoff frequency, the reflection likewise must be equal to 0.5 at that cutoff frequency. In other words, omega c is the frequency at which half of the incident power, uh, in the power incident on the input of the filter, half that power is reflected, and therefore the other half then uh, propagates through the filter and ultimately is absorbed by the load. So we call this the half power point, uh, often this cutoff frequency. High pass filter is uh, the opposite of low pass filter, of course. The uh, pass band now extends from the value of omega c, the half power frequency, all the way theoretically toward infinity. And so in that region of the pass band, the transmission is approximately equal to 1, and therefore the reflection must be approximately equal to 0. None of the instant power is reflected, and therefore all of it passes through the filter and is absorbed by the match load. In the stop band, therefore, the transmission is zero because the reflection in the stop band is equal to one. All of the incident power is reflected if the frequency of that signal is between zero and the cutoff frequency. By far the most prevalent filter in microwave engineering, radio engineering, is the bandpass filter. And the bandpass filter has a range of frequencies that um, it, it define its, its uh, passband. And uh, again, we can define that in terms of either the low frequency and high frequency, or we can define it in terms of the center frequency and the delta. For wideband, frequent, uh, wideband filters, we typically um, will define it um, with respect to uh, low frequency and high frequency narrow band in terms of the center frequency and this delta. At any rate, the uh, pass band is, um, is defined as a finite region, which neither extends all the way to zero, nor does it extend all the way to one. And of course, in the stop band, either side of the pass band, uh, we get a transmission that is nearly zero because all of the uh, incident power is reflected at the input for those frequencies. So just to complete the four kinds of filters, we have a stop band filter. And a stop band filter has a narrow range of frequencies uh, where the transmission goes to zero. And so this filter allows essentially every signal to come through except for a certain range which it rejects. And um, uh, this kind of filter is used uh, frequently if there's a interfering signal that we want to uh, eliminate. Uh, we'll put a filter at the location of the interfering signal and because of reflection then all that signal is reflected away from the load or from the rest of the receiver.